I picked up a bunch of oval frames well over a year ago at a garage sale. I removed the backing, I removed the glass, I cleaned up the glass, and then I painted all of the frames. I flipped them over and I took Elmer's glue and I put it around the perimeter of the back of the frame where the glass would sit. Then I replaced the glass and took Elmer's glue one more time and put it around the perimeter. Now this serves two purposes. It helps to hold the glass in place and it also helps to prevent resin leaks when you put resin on the other side. Now the resin will permanently adhere it to the frame when you put resin on. This needs to dry overnight and sometimes up to 24 hours depending on how much glue you use. Next I traced out a menorah and I taped it to the back of the glass to use as a template. Next I took clear Elmer's glue and I just followed along all of the lines to use as a guide for my beads. And then I took the beads and followed along all of the glue lines. So these beads were actually found in a bag at Michael's. They have like 10, they have them in like 10 different colors in large quantities and bags hanging over in the bead section and they're real pretty beads come in all different colors. And what I did was I just went ahead like I said and put it right on top of the Elmer's glue line that I had created. And I just think this turned out so pretty. Next, I had picked up some candles at Walmart, actually. They were silver candles at Walmart. And I went ahead and I just put a candle at the top of each one. And soon after I did that, I realized that the center one is supposed to be a little bit taller than the other ones. That's the candle that I guess you light the other candles with. So what I ended up doing was um, taking the eight candles off and actually cutting them with a razor to make them a little bit shorter. Plus, I took the beads for the center one and made that a little bit taller and left that candle um, at the taller height. I don't show where I um, actually cut the candles off. But anyway, next I printed up Happy Hanukkah on my Cricut. And then I put that at the very top of the glass. I decided I wanted the wicks of the candles to be yellow to look like they were lit. And I went ahead and tried painting it with magic marker. And that didn't work very well. So I started dipping it into the yellow paint. Let that dry for a couple hours. And then I went ahead and glued the candles down to the glass. So that the next day when I went to put the resin on, they weren't going to wiggle all over the place. And actually I put tape on the back also. So now it's ready for the resin. And I do take some paper tape or some... Um, painter's tape and dab around all over the canvas to pick up any, um, you know, residue that might have gotten on there. The resin I'm using for this project is called Craft Resin Crystal Clear. It's a one-to-one -one ratio resin that you mix in a cup slowly for three minutes, just like most of the other one-to-one -one ratio resins. Of course, it's clear when you first start mixing it, it becomes cloudy, you can see kind of like strings in there, and after about three minutes you'll notice that it's perfectly clear. And um, I usually let it sit for 10-15 minutes to let some of the bubbles rise to the top because some will dissipate during that time. Then I started drizzling the resin over all the candles first and then over the beads. Now. Um, Whatever resin you choose to use on their website, they should have a resin calculator where you can tell them the size of your project. Just keep in mind that it doesn't take into account that you may be using glass. I always use more resin than needed. It's just the way I am, but you can um, you know, choose for yourself how much resin to use. You need to use a spoon or some kind of a tool to push the resin around. Make sure it gets up along the sides and into the corners. I know they say it's self-leveling, but it doesn't always level out totally. And it's really important that the table that you use is level. 
and um, mine really isn't so after I'm done spreading it out I usually pick my project up and set it on the floor because I know my floor is level. My kitchen torch to get rid of the bubbles. I have to be really careful because these are candles. I'm afraid I'm going to melt the wax with this. And with all my projects, after I'm done, I come back multiple times at 15 minute intervals to recheck it, to retorch it for bubbles. And I also turn the project um, in different angles and look at it at eye level to make sure I don't see any sediment in it. Sometimes you can turn it another way and it looks totally different and you can you know you can see something from that angle that you couldn't see from the other and I usually use a toothpick to get the sediment out and also bubbles like to congregate along the edges of um, your your project like in this instance there's a bunch of little bubbles along the edges of the candles that I have to use a toothpick to kind of move away before I retorch them so again, this needs to sit on a flat level surface. This particular resin has to sit between 70 and 75 degrees Fahrenheit. All resins are different. You need to read the directions for the resin that you are using. It's in your best interest to cover it with a dust cover when you're done. Hey everyone, all finished. I think it turned out really cute. So on our uh, Facebook page, everybody has been posting all sorts of Christmas stuff because um, I think because a lot of people are um, getting ready for craft fairs and stuff like that, people who sell and they wanna have all their holiday stuff in advance. So um, I get, it's getting everybody in the mood for the holidays. So anyway, um, yeah, a lot of different Christmas trees and stuff. And one of the ladies had posted, well, is there anything I could make for Hanukkah? And I thought, well, yeah, sure. I could come up with some projects. So this is one of the projects I came up with. And like I said, I think it turned out really cute and it was so easy. I cannot tell you how easy these beads were to put down. But anyway, um, as far as the candles go, so, um, you know, I dipped the top of them in paint and then set them down to dry. Well, some of them I actually set on tape. Well, don't do it because look at <laughs> the silver that came off stuck to the tape. So, um, so anyway, I was lucky I had enough candles I could finish the project. So just don't put them on tape. And as far as the um, words go, so Happy Hanukkah was done with my Cricut machine. And I know everybody doesn't have a Cricut machine. So, but what you can do is you can actually print it out, um, go on to one of your word processing sites. You can print it out whatever size, whatever font you want print it, tape it to the back, and use your oil-based Sharpie markers to trace the, the letters. And that'll work perfectly fine. I've had to do it before. So um, the only thing is do not use regular Sharpie markers. I have had problems with that running. And on our Facebook page, there was actually a discussion about other uh, markers and things that you can use that will not run with resin. So. Um, you could scroll down and find that too if you're interested, but I always use the oil-based markers and I've not had any problems with them. So, um, and again, so these beads were so easy to do. And the other thing that you could use would be the rhinestone chains. Uh, the rhinestone chains um, that you get, you can get them on Amazon or on Timu. Timu's a little bit less expensive, but you can only get the two millimeter, which are much smaller, the four millimeter ones you can get on Amazon. Um, and the other thing with the beads, I don't know if I made a mistake putting the resin over it. So you should always test your beads with resin before you do it. And I did put a little on and I didn't think it changed it, but this is what they looked like before the resin was on it. And I'm gonna to try to bring that up. So I think it might have lost a little sparkle there. I'm not sure. So if I had to do it again, I would glue them down and then just put the resin around it or put the beads into it. So um, I just wanna show you some other beads. So these beads here I had picked up uh, at Hobby Lobby, just regular and expensive holiday beads. And you can see the difference. So these big ones are both the exact same bead. This has resin on it, this doesn't. You can see how you can see the bevel and here it totally disappears. So they're both pretty, 
it just depends on, you know, the look that you want. So this one has resin on it. And this one, if you wanted it to look like that, you would set it in the resin and just don't pour the resin on top. Now here's another bead that I poured it on um, in that same box and it did not lose its iridescence. Can you see that? It's still there. And then here's some other beads I had gotten on Timu. Um, real pretty, um, very iridescent, and I poured resin over it, and there still um, has its iridescent qualities. So some, um, so resin can change the look of the beads. The rhinestone chains that I use a lot, they um, do retain their sparkly qualities if you put the resin over it. So um, that, like I said, that was another option. So if you guys enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you enjoyed the channel, go ahead and subscribe. The Facebook page is going. It's going um, really well. People are um, joining like crazy. Uh, there's people that are, uh, you know, don't have any experience. They're newbies. There's people who have never, um, who are very experienced. So it's a great place to ask questions. I'm learning a lot on my own. Facebook page. And um, anyway, and I hope you guys all have a great day. Thanks for watching.